How do you do everybody and welcome back to How Do You Do with Roger Isai. Today's episode is a special episode because it was a live streaming episode. It aired a couple days ago. It went pretty good if I say so myself. Although there were a few hiccups in the beginning but I got through them. You guys, like any live um, anything, can expect the unexpected. But I am down here in beautiful downtown Santa Ana in front of the studio because my next guest is Sarah Rafael Garcia of Crea Studio. She's also the owner of Little Molly and you're about to find out more about it. Why don't we get on with the show? Hey, hey, hey. We'll give, give it a few seconds, see if anyone logs on. Welcome, you guys, to another episode of How Do You Do with Roger Eisler. Where we talk about routines, talk about everyday life. It's uh, kind of a, a day in the life type of setup. So when we get to know our guests, Sarah Rafael Garcia, you might know her from Libro Mobile, you might know her from Crear Studio, you might know her from the project that we did together here behind me. So um, when we get to know her, what do you want to know? <laughs> Hi, Sarah. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Pretty uh, good. I'm getting a little bit of feedback here. Okay. Okay. I'm actually good. at the bookstore now, and I'm going to take a picture of us so that I can do it. I can post it for our, our first hour open. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. This is live. Let's, let's... That's a fun part. <laughs> Yeah, I can hear you now. There's just a little bit of uh, 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 delay, I think, is what's happening. Hopefully it doesn't throw you off. No, I'm good. Um, so what would you like me to start with, Roger? So, Sarah, I know you from so much, that, from all of the work that you do downtown. I don't know if every uh, one of our listeners knows you so why don't you start off with that a little bit what do you do and then we'll get into your day yeah sure i am currently at the bookstore off of bristol mcfadden at libro mobile um i switched a shift with marilyn because she gave me a day off during the week so i'm here sir, literally as the book advisor um and then sometimes i'm at Greer studio where i'm a gallery director and then when I get to do stuff for myself, then I'd like to say that I'm a multimedia artist, um, working with the digital humanities and collaborating with visual artists and trying to find a way to do storytelling from the community's point of view um, for any project, right? Um, and I think, you know, I think Roger and I met initially when I was doing Santana's Fairy Tales. Um, and now that project has gone on its own life and. Um, the book is recently part of the ethnic studies reading requirement for Santa Ana Unified School District. So that's really exciting. Um, and then what else do I do? I read every morning. I, um, oh, oh, wait a minute. Hear? Sorry, the, the, the live feed got cut. Huh, that's weird. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to How Do You Do with Roger Izar. Yes, I can hear you. Great. There definitely is a delay. That's interesting. But OK, we'll get through this. All right, so let's get started. I think we left off on how we got to know each other and how we worked on the map together on how you are part of uh, Little Mobile, Korea Studio, and um, <laughs> how you're an artist on your spare time when you got the time if i heard that right uh yeah when i do have spare time which lately hasn't been much but yes i'm a multimedia artist on my spare time on instagram i actually have an artist account but i don't really share it widely it's cuentos mobil if you notice there's a trend in all my projects there's barrio writers there's libro mobile or libro mobile and then there's crear studio and then there's cuentos mobil right that's awesome. See, I totally get you on there because just like you, I wear many hats. So little spare time that I've got, I'm going to get creative with it too. So um, are you getting that feedback or that delay too? Is it throwing you off or are you okay? 
I don't know. I mean, you don't seem delayed to me. Oh, okay. That's great. That's good to hear. Well, as I long as I haven't anyone that has to bear with it. I think we're in sync because you're responding immediately after I talk. Okay, good. All right. I think maybe my earpiece is coming in a little delayed. But okay. Now I, I can get my head into it. So um, the podcast is about routines. It, it is mostly uh, about a day in a life type of situation for you, a typical day. But one of the reasons that I wanted to do um, a live stream was because it throws us, throws us off out of, out of routines, <clears throat> excuse me, because this isn't something that I do usually. I usually pre-record everything. Mm -hmm. So, you know, kind of throw a little curveball on me, give me something to do. Uh, not that I need something else to do, but how do you usually start your days off? Are you a morning person? Are you kind of wake up early or are you kind of sleep in? I, I mean, I think I wake up at a normal time. I think most, some people would say it's late. Some people would say it's early. I wake up usually around, I don't know, 6.45, 7.30. And um, I start my day every day with breakfast with my husband. With my yeah. husband. So you do um, have breakfast? We always have yeah. breakfast. Okay. And you guys have it together? That's so nice. That's so cool. Yeah. Is it since COVID or is it something you guys do? No, it's something we always did because we're like, we, you know, we don't have children and, and we don't have family close by. So the one thing that we commit to is having breakfast together. Um, and that is part of our daily routine. Um, sometimes we talk, sometimes we read our own things. Um, sometimes we finish together and move on with the rest of the day or some, or other times one of us is in a hurry to leave. So we'll, you know, we'll leave in mid breakfast and kiss goodbye and call it a day. But it no, is. Wait, wait, I think you're going. I'm going to slow you down a little bit because this is where I like to get into detail. There's a bunch of details, right? So you like coffee, orange juice, tea. Which which your jam when you when you? Go Recently, to. I switched to tea. So I'm gonna okay. Have, yeah, I have a, a tea that's called Intimacy from um, Classy Hippie Tea Company that's based oh. in Sacramento. And then they're really <laughs> right on. Do you, do you have? Is that like your favorite tea, or do you have um, like different ones that you? This is my favorite tea because I'm a huge coffee fanatic and okay. found out that coffee was hurting my stomach. So I switched to tea, this tea particularly because I love the flavor of it and it's still caffeinated. Yeah. This is my go-to every morning tea. Right on. I got, um, not too long ago, maybe, I don't know, maybe last year I picked up on London Fog. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what brand, man, that with a little coconut milk. And that's that's my jam right there. No, I totally have it with oat milk. I drink it like coffee. Oh man, oat milk isn't oat milk the best? Yeah, I love oat milk. Yeah, right on. See, that's why I'm, that's why I like getting into the little details because you, you know you, you don't know how everyone's living. I like that. I like that about um getting to know my friends even more. Um, so let's go on with the day. What's the typical day? So you say about ten. You're kind of leaving, leaving out. <laughs> We always read. I mean, I always read in the morning with breakfast. Oh, right on. Okay. So that's the way I get my reading in. And I am a, I forgive myself, even if I only have a, the attention span for one page or, or sometimes I sit and read 20. It just depends what right on. How much time I have. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how I keep that routine of reading. Because if not, you know, the day goes by and then you're too tired at nighttime. Oh, or yeah want to tune out and watch binge watch a tv show so that's how i you know having breakfast and reading and hanging out with my partner is like the way to start the day right on i mean i definitely could do a little bit more reading but when i do i definitely put in i just get lost for a while you know what i mean i definitely don't do it every day but for sure at least a couple of times a week it kind of varies do you read for pleasure for or for like your research or some combination a combination. A lot of yeah. times I'm reading for style, like how people write or for art. Yes. If I want to learn about, I mean, I'm a, I'm a fairly new artist. It's like, I didn't start really getting into art until like 2015, 16. Right on. So for me, it's always learning. Um, and so it just depends right now I'm reading a food, a food writing collection because okay. I'm working on a food writing anthology. So right I'm reading for style. That's awesome, you know. That's why um, the conversations that we've had, I've always found, I, I, I like them because you've always got something going on. I feel like I'm the same type of person. Oh, we've got something going on. I'm doing something. I just, not so much idle hands. What's that? 
think that we both have too much going on. <laughs> yes, I would say so, you know, but I think we manage all right. You know, it's crazy that the, on the other hand, we could be doing nothing. And, you know, that doesn't, doesn't travel with me so much. But oh, man, okay. So let's go. Oh, I didn't mean man. Just come, <laughs> comes out. Um, so we're out of the house now. And you, and you just got a new place not too long ago. So congratulations. I'm just making it official out here. So, you know, so you make your drive out. Do you usually hit Crear or Libro Mobile or do you kind of depend on the day? It depends on the day. Most of the time, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I'm at the bookstore. And then Thursdays and Fridays, I'm at Crear Studio. And if we have an exhibition, I'm also at the gallery on Sundays. I mean, right. I'll, not on Sundays, oh. on Saturdays. Right. And then Sundays, I'm at home. Um, so I try to stay home as much as I can on Sundays and Mondays. Yeah, you know, you really do have to set aside a day for yourself to just kind of do the things that you need to do to, to keep everything going. For sure, I think I need to do that a little bit more, uh, you know, myself, but I'm, I'm all right. I find time during the day to kind of uh, um, get myself back in order or, or whatever. But um, I just want to point out, everybody, if you didn't pick up on that, the days that she's at Libro Mobile and the days that she's at Kerias, if you want to come see her, and now you know both the spots, you need to come down here. Oh, that's Canada is a beautiful place, and Libro Mobile is having their grand opening, right? I don't mean to uh, interject, interject with that, but it's on the 19th? Yeah, March 19th. And so, th but I'm, I'm like literally throwing everyone for a curve today because I'm at the bookstore today, which is Friday, uh, <laughs> because I switched a day with Marilyn. For my benefits, I needed a day off in the middle of the week. But um, so I'm here now, but then I'll run over to Crear and then I'll go home. <laughs> Good. Uh, but yes, we have our grand opening on March 19th. Super excited. It's going to be just a fun day. Um, we're not planning anything elaborate, but definitely a day in community. So we'll open with danza with the bless blessing from a local danza group. And then, you know, we'll have some local poets reading. So awesome. Yeah, to Gustavo Hernandez and Jesus Cortez. So we're representing Santa Ana and Anaheim. That's what it's all about. Yeah, and then we'll have even some like OC history trivia. So okay. it'll be fun, you know, interaction with Interactive, the, yeah. Yeah, with the People's Guide of OC authors, who's Gustavo Arellano, um, Elaine Luenick and Tweed Dalvang, who will be here just to, you know, when people shout out a city or a region in Orange County, they'll, mm -hmm. they'll shout out facts, trivia. Oh, facts. right on. Look at that. I love that little um, fun facts. Yeah. That. And then we will have two amazing artists there, right? Um, so we'll have <laughs> you um, and with your, with your Cara Cara project. Um, and then Jose Lozano, who is our art is throughout the bookstore, and he'll be, He'll be here as well and officially signing the panels that we have of this work. So awesome. We'll go ahead and give the, the address later at the end of the podcast because it's going to be an amazing, amazing event. It's also, um, I've, you know, we've, I've mentioned this to you before. I really, one of the best things about Libro Movie moving because it was really, I was like, what? Well, are, are you guys moving out of downtown? You guys moved into what I consider it's mid city, right? Pretty much like Bristol and McFadden. <clears throat> and I grew up not too far from there. So I'm really uh, familiar with the area. And a bookstore like Libro Movie is exactly what the community needs. So it's so awesome. And this event's going to be so awesome. Yeah. It. it really helped us get immersed into the community further because I feel like. Um, being downtown, definitely, we had the local folks that walked every day and, and the patrons that come to the quinceanera shops, right? Um, but I feel like now we are really are a community bookstore because the people that find us is because they want to find us. It's not because they're stumbling upon us. You know? Yes, you know, and, and there's, there's good things to both sides, but I think you're right. I agree with that, that they're there for you and the people that do find you from the community. It's a gem. It's a gem where you guys are at. So. Probably to you guys. Uh, we haven't mentioned Manny, but Manny. <laughs> Manny. <Yeah, take> <laughs> <laughs> so let's get back to our day. Uh, this is a, a fun, relaxed conversation. So we go on tangents. It's all good. So you get, do um, you have your days pretty much planned out? You know, like whatever, wherever you're at, you, you know what you're going to do and take care of, or do you just kind of like hang out and see what the day kind of brings? 
most of the time I have my days planned out because I have deadlines and events yep. coming up that we need to market. Um, but I also do a, like a physical and mental check every day because like, that's why one of the reasons I'm here, I'm at the bookstore on a Friday because I just was so tired on Tuesday that I was like, you know what, I need to stay home on Wednesday. Um, because you can't, you know, like with, as a creative person, you know, like the worst thing that could happen is that you're mentally exhausted. Um, and it's frustrating because you have a lot of ideas and things you want to do, but if your mind and heart can't get into it, then it removes the whole reason for being right as, as artists. Right. So that's one of the things I judge daily is like, how do I wake up feeling and then kind of go like, okay, is this a must do today or can I move it? You know, if I, if yeah. I 100%. It's important. I think I, uh, um, I also am governed by deadlines and all that kind of stuff. So my days are pretty planned out. I can, I'm, I can be wound up pretty tight sometimes. So I'll be like, no, man, you know, but I also have to, I, pretty much since COVID, I found that I have to kind of step back and be like, you know what, man, I have to, okay, I could do that tomorrow. I could take it that later, do this and just reorganize and, mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, I mean, really just for mental health, but really if I want to to go back to what you are mentioning, if I want to do good work, I can't be a mess. You know, I've got to have my head head on right, focus at task at hand. So thank you for that. You know, one of the reasons I started this podcast too is to get to know my friends better too, but you know, everyone lives their life a little bit different and there's things that we can kind of uh, pick up from because just like, like you said, I'm always learning. There's always something I can kind of do better. And I admire you and your work. I think every one of my guests I, are friends or people that I know and I admire. So thank you for kind of putting that in my head and making sure I continue doing those mental checks because, you know, without them, I don't know what we're going to do. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and then, you know, and our work suffers, but also like our sustainability, right? Because if we can't, like if we feel exhausted from the work we're doing, then to me, it feels like it becomes a burden versus a creative process. Yeah, yeah, that's a very thin line, or you know, you gotta manage that because I know that, you know, sometimes working on projects, yeah, you get fatigued. You're like, I've been doing this for so long. You know, I, I need to. Uh, I usually have other projects that come my way though, so distract me for a little while. But let's get back. It's not about me. It's about you. Let's go back to your day. So your days at. Um, at uh, Cread, I know that you have an awesome show right now, which I have to apologize, I haven't been able to go out there, been really tied up lately. But tell us a little bit about, about the show and how that um, came together, just so we can not. Yeah, so um, it was, it, it literally closed this week. It was the Orange County Black History Parade um, archival <laughs> exhibition. So it was the first archival exhibition at our site. It's technically our third show, but we've hosted many things in between. Um, and I initially got to meet the ship family back in 2020, right before the pandemic actually, because it was the 40th year anniversary of the parade. And I was um, commissioned to write a piece for a local publication. Um, mm -hmm. I got picked up by the LA Times as well. So it helped me like really get to know the black history in our community, but firsthand through the ship family, through Dwayne BH ship. And at the time they had an exhibition at Museo and, and I looked at it and thought, you know, like we need to celebrate our, our local history more, especially when it comes to people of color and black history, because, yeah. you know, the city used to have such rich cultural traditions and, and black community members. And we don't oh, yeah. mm -hmm. it changes everything. So I was able to connect with BH and ask, if he would be interested in having the exhibit at Crayash Studio during the um, month of February and, and you know, part of the an extension of the parade. So that was beautiful to be able to curate that. And it was probably the first show I curated all by myself, which was really challenging and exciting. Wow. Yeah. Um, you know, the beauty in that and working in solitude is that you make the own rules and you can change your mind at the last second. Yep. But then like the the challenge is you have no feedback, you have no one there like saying rooting you on or saying mm, maybe you should do it a little different, right? Yeah. There's like, and I've been working collaboratively with people for so long that I miss that sometimes. And, but yeah. it, was, it was, I mean, it was challenging and exciting and, I, and it came out better than I ever could imagine. Thanks to some collaborations that I did have, like 
I had Lisa Alvarez, who was one of the artists from the former show that I had with oh, right on. She created the beautiful banners that just yeah. made the exhibit perfect. Is she the one that did like, um, it was a, the facing wall, right? It was on the wall, her piece? Yeah, and she had the garment of I. Yeah. Yeah, a garment um, for the other los muertos. Yeah, I remember meeting her. Yeah, she's awesome. Yeah, um, it's really cool. And then this week I'll be releasing the three D capture of the archival exhibition, so you will be able to visit it, Roger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I want to see it in person. Art should always be. Oh, uh, it comes down today. <laughs> <laughs> well. We're getting ready to work I think maybe, I, I, maybe I waited a little too long. See, that's the trouble about getting too, too busy, that you miss out on really great stuff. But, you know, I hope that, um, well, no, no. I know that you're going to continue doing great, great um, exhibits. So I can't wait for the next one. I applaud you for everything that you do and stuff. So let's go, let's go on with your day. Okay. So um, you said you, 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 get, you leave home a little bit um like 10 or something so do you have like a, a do you have lunch at regular time or is that something that you just kind of push lunch is based on if i'm hungry i usually have a pretty hearty breakfast like papas con huevo or oh yeah sometimes i'll have like a gluten-free bagel sandwich so i'm pretty a good breakfast eater so mm -hmm. like right now my lunch is this it's like a pear <laughs> i hear you um, no, no i got you and but when i'm at the bookstore it's very convenient because the food courts next door so mm. sometimes lunch is esquite right like because oh man the food court has esquite every day you don't have to like race down the street tracking down the esquite person <laughs> there's a food court yeah so there's esquite every day at the food court so yeah it's usually that i i rarely have a big lunch unless i'm having a meeting with somebody and then we go to lunch and stuff like that but um so yeah that's that's usually my lunch i drink a lot of water throughout the day um, That's mm -hmm. my tea if I didn't finish it over breakfast. Um, and then usually Manny and I try to have dinner together. Um, awesome. We're both pretty mentally exhausted. So we'll usually do it on the couch with Hulu or, or uh, some kind of movie popped open on our laptop we don't have a tv so that's the way oh, right on. It, uh, tv is overrated that's good i mean i have a tv i don't even really get to watch it i'm you know i'm not what am i watching <laughs> I, gotta be, I gotta do something else um that's uh just to go back a little bit to the lunch thing i also am notorious for skipping lunch or mm -hmm. i'll just skip breakfast all together just because I, I but i get caught up in my work so it's not i'm saying that's healthy i've talked to other guests about that too but I always have to remind myself, I'm like, I probably should be eating right about an hour within the next hour or so, something, because I'll definitely drink water. I'm really, I, I'm good at drinking water, but I just forget to eat and put tied up on something. You know, you get, I get caught up in my work. It's what happens. And, you know, I don't want to pull away. I'm like, oh, I'll just eat later, man. I'll just eat later. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, it's so nice to hear that you guys come together and make it a point because, you know, just being in a relationship too, you know, it's about those things. I mean, it's about coming together and spending time, you know, and, and I know that we all get busy, but if uh, if you can make it happen, by all means, you really should, you know? Yeah, and sometimes we eat our own things. It's not like we're making this big dinner or, or meal. Breakfast is probably the only thing we make together, like cook and, and plan and, and ask each other, what do you want today? And we alternate cooking, which is beautiful because, you know, I think... That's awesome! Yeah, it's not like a... a um, it's nobody's obligation. So sometimes Manny wakes up excited to cook something and I'm like happy yeah. I don't feel like it. Or vice versa, I'll say, hey, what do you want today? I'm thinking of this, you know? Um, yeah. I think with dinner, we kind of like, we kind of like, oh, what well, depends how our mood is. Like if mm -hmm. we're really tired and we're like, well, I'll just have a quesadilla, you know? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. I, I hear you there too. Sometimes it's just going to be like, hey, something really light. Not, yeah. not, not so much. And you said that you, you do... Uh, try to pull away and watch something together. Is there something you like recommend? What do you got? What are you guys watching lately? Oh my gosh, we're watching this show called The Terror right now. It's the really, Terror. really good. And again, it's I we we both like like ethno fiction where you bring in history and real life events and switch them out with like different styles of, of genres, like whether it's speculative fiction or sci fi, right? right so on. Like, the terror is very like speculative fiction and it has to do with the Japanese encampment era. Yeah, uh, but it covers a lot of amazing history and and a lot of the 
horrible things that happened during that time. But then it also brings in a lot of Japanese culture and urban legends and and myths and and traditions. So that one's really good. And it's um, called the Terror. It's called the Terror, and it's part of a series of I couldn't tell you what series, but if you look up the Terror Japanese Encampment, it'll come yeah. up. I'll check it out. Yeah, yeah, I'll definitely check it out. I'm I'm always looking for something good to watch. I don't know that I'll get around to it, but I'll eventually get around to it. You know. Yeah, it's really good, and it and it's a it's a series of things. Um, so like the historical, the one before it, I forgot what that one was called, and it had to do with um, when they were trying to find the Arctic Passage and the ships got stuck out there. Mm -hmm. uh, what happened there, right? So it's like a a series that that um, explores historical moments and kind of develops it differently, which I love. I love when you can pull in history and represent it in a different format, but yeah. still have the important content in it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, that shows just the, the writing, you know, um, the writing chops and really, that's really interesting. I really like that too. I listen to a lot of podcasts because I'm so busy doing stuff. I don't really watch stuff, but I, but I listen to a lot of stuff. And it tends to be a lot of historical stuff, random stuff. Um, yeah. I just, I just gravitate towards it, you know, so anytime I can kind of pick up on, on something good, uh to watch you know along those same lines i'm totally down with that and you know um speaking on um on uh, um, the writing of the show you know and, and i'm only bringing it up because you said um it was challenging to do the curating the show you know a little bit and it's all about at least for me challenging oneself you know i think as a creative person you can it's really easy to kind of get set in your ways or just do one thing and at least you know no 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 hate on that that's good the master you know great but i like to challenge myself i like to do something that i'm not you know um i don't know not prone to do it. like the podcast like this is you know it's been a whole little endeavor it's been fun real challenging you know but it's um i don't know i mean we only live once right and i want to learn i want to do stuff i mean it's kind of like the map project. I think we both yes. were like, hey, let's step up and try this, right? And yeah, um, it's still yeah. ongoing. And I, I, I'm, I've been itching to sit down and continue adding all the history. But the cool part is now we have this book that's right next to me, <laughs> the People's yeah. Guide. And I'm so excited because when I was struggling, like trying to cite local folks for the history, I was pulling from all directions, and so I only have like six or eight places on the map that are are um, cited right now mm -hmm. but now with the new book that came out i'm like oh my god had i known this book was coming out i would have waited longer because <laughs> <laughs> now i have like a cheat sheet you know yes yes i gotta pick up that book i mean they're amazing authors so i mean how not i mean yeah, and, and that and that takes me back to like both both you know um taking the challenge of doing this project and i think you know, for me, it's also great to work with artists like you who say, yeah, let's do this. We'll figure it out as we go. Yeah. And, and look how beautiful it is. It's not at all how we planned it, but it's, it's a, it took evolution, right, on its own. Yeah, totally. I mean, and, and really, and strengthening our, our creativity, you know, just taking it there and, and, and pushing forward on these projects. I don't know. I mean, when we, when we started talking about the, the, the map, it was just, I mean, it evolved, right? It really did. It just grew and grew and grew. And like you said, it hasn't stopped yet. We're busy, so we, we don't have, um, we're not constantly adding to it, but it's an on, ongoing project. And I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know what else. Not, I'm going to put it wrong. I don't know how to do it any other way. You know what I mean? Like, I like the way I do, what I do and how I do it. Always constantly doing something. I gravitate towards people that kind of the same way. In some sorts, you know, I think that's why we were able to work on, on that project and I look forward to do some more projects too. And so I don't mean to uh, be back enough or anything, but how do you end your days with you? Do you guys just kind of fall asleep on the sofa or does one <laughs> yeah. of you kind of make it to the bed and calls the other one? Yeah, you you know, yesterday was like an untraditional night for us because I was, I've been working on a, a writing piece um, so I worked late and Manny works late on Thursdays too, because he's at, he teaches at Cal State Fullerton. So right. he's a student of classes. So usually um, what we do is if we're, 
we we actually like tap each other out be like okay it's 10 o'clock we need to stop working if we're working right like and right we still watch something and t or talk about something that happened in the day and that's usually how we end our night we usually fall asleep around 11 or midnight that's good that's a nice full day right sure. on. you have a cocktail <laughs> there, there's that one thing um so what what do you, what do you drink when you're having a cocktail if it's a cocktail, we like old fashions. Oh, um, yeah. Every once in a while, I like margaritas. I got really good at making margaritas during this. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> so yeah. now I'm very particular. I can't just go anywhere and have a margarita. Um, <laughs> as it should, though, as it should. Yeah. And so that's you, we our whiskey. Um, right on. There you go. And then and during the week, I drink wine and Manny drinks beer. But then on the weekends or towards the weekend, we'll have a cocktail or two. You know what? I like I like that plan. I might have to take that with me, you guys. Because I don't discriminate. I drink whatever I kinda wanna drink, but every day. But I should probably I mean I don't I don't I don't go crazy, but I'm saying like, oh I'll just have a beer, I'll just have like whatever. But yeah, maybe wine and um wine during the week and, and booze on the weekends. <laughs> <laughs> I got uh, and how do you like those how do you make those margaritas? Do you uh frozen blend it or on the rocks? Oh, it's always on the rocks. Um right. I think I like the uh, margarita juice mix from Trader Joe's. So uh, yeah, I use it. Add a splash of of sparkling water and fresh lime and salt. Yes, and that's I usually I usually prep it like that, and so it's very it's more like a cantarito style, but without the squirt. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah. You gotta cut out those calories and those sugars, man. Sugars yeah. will get you. So that's what I have. And then on the weekend, something that we've started, part of our routine, every uh, every other weekend we hang out with friends um, in our backyard or go, or go beer tasting somewhere with nice. uh, some friends. So we'll have to invite you all over soon. Yeah, of course, of course, yeah. Um, but that's what's what we've been doing. And um, it's been great because it kind of makes us like, to now and also like you're, like you're doing with your podcast, it makes us get to know our friends better. And, it, you know, like, all politics aside, all productivity aside, sometimes we're just hanging in our hammocks in our backyard with our friends, you know. Oh man, so That's awesome. Getting back to like, you know, we don't need to be productive this day. We just need to hang out and shoot the shit. And you, you know. see, it's all about balance, right? You gotta find balance in, in your week. I love it. You know, it's always it's one of those friends and family is always a hard thing to do too because you know you love them both, but there's only so much time that you have. And so I kind of have to juggle it and, or, if, you know, I end up just doing it when I can, you know, mm -hmm. uh, so it can be not random, but, you know, I have a good, a good balance, but it's good to hear that you guys always keep it balanced. You guys are a great couple. I love to hear how you guys support each other. I, I love that you guys tap each other out. I'm like, that's, that's, that's kind of good. That's, that's a good, that's a good move. I like it. But, um, we would work all night and we don't want to. Yeah, no, I, I'm, see, I do. It just you know and uh um but enough about me let's talk about again now your day what's uh what's um some things i like to kind of bring it back around by talking about what's a, a high point of your day what do you look forward to in like, any particular day i think it depends because i have so many different things going on like um when i have a new ex exhibition going on my high point is like looking over the layout and planning the next exhibition um, when I'm writing like a project, like right now, I really, I cannot wait to get home to finish the article that I'm writing about local artists and, and digging in, into like storytelling and how to put that together. And I think being a gallery director has definitely helped me be a better writer because I'm curating the piece first before actually writing it out. And so, right. um, those are the things I look forward to. I realize that I really miss being an artist every day. Um, yes. I, I do believe we we need more arts administrators of color and, and independent administrators um, so that we can find funding for artists like you and me to yeah. do the work that we like to do versus pandering to, to the city or, or to art organizations who are waving dollars at us to do what they want us to do rather than what yeah. we, we actually are good at, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that part of me, I don't like. <laughs> I don't like being an administrator at all. I really look forward to being an artist and I don't have much time of that. So I'm trying to find a way to cultivate more time 
to be an artist every day, right? And yeah. um, so I think that's what I look forward to. Right now, I can't say I have like high points of my day. I have mm -hmm. high points of my week, right? So mm -hmm. on my day off, I really look forward to Sundays when I have a little bit of time in my in my own studio in my garage. Yeah. Um, now it's all set up and ready to go. Awesome. Um, I know. I really, I I can't wait to just sit there and work and um and I look forward to having just regular conversations with people that don't involve like what goes on during the week right um i want to hear what their favorite shoes or socks are or where their favorite hike is um yes yeah. you know what's their favorite drink right like yes so that's that's i mean that's you're doing it right sarah you guys are doing yeah. it right i mean well, we're not everything yet, saying we're really lovely. yeah uh, you know i do feel you though on the uh um, you know, I've gotten to know you uh, better, especially the last kind of more years since we've been working a little bit more and now with the podcast, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know that I could not do any art every day or something. I don't know. I think it would just be a fire in me. I don't think, I don't think I could handle it. I would have to at least just scribble something and stay till midnight just so I can get it in there. Yeah. Um, and what I'm finding out is that, um, not doing art for the last six months has really messed me up mentally and physically and, and even like, um, like keeping me balanced. Right. Cause I have end up having bad days and I realize, Oh, it's cause I haven't done anything creative. Yeah. It's that release, right. It's that, uh, that, um, expression of, of just creativity. Yeah. I mean, um, it's, I think, you know, not only, not only us, but I think everybody, just everybody. I'm, I'm a big uh, advocate for just art in itself, for art's sake, for, you know, for, for mental, uh, um, uh, um, not security, but, you know, mental rest, you know, just, it makes you feel good. I mean, everyone likes something to do, even if it's just those adult coloring books, but, you know, like, yeah, I mean, some people dig them like a lot. I'm like, that's great. That's, you know, it, it's fun start playing with color, you know, different patterns. But it, I really do feel that if the world could, if everyone could just do a little art. Yeah, that's why I'm kind of looking forward to Art Walk tomorrow. Yeah, uh, yep. Because I think people will, I, I printed some different coloring sheets. Um, yeah. And then also to have the input from the community on, on your visual map and the project in itself. So that all of that is really exciting. Um, I'm glad you brought up the art walk because it is tomorrow. So maybe we should bring it up, you guys. Tomorrow, first Saturday, downtown San Ana, art walk. You can catch us both at they have studios on Fifth Street in between uh, what is that Broadway and Sycamore? Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. By la, ma la Madre de nat Naturaleza Mural. Yeah. Yes. Coalition Mural. Um, that's where we'll be. You can talk to us about the map. You can talk about anything else. And you said the show will be there coming down today or tomorrow? Um, the the Black History Archival Exhibition, um, it's coming down today. We're actually putting up your, your large map um, tomorrow. You so, guys, you got to see it. Yeah, so they can see the big one and then the sidewalk one as well. And yeah. and then I will, we will have post-it so people can add their own input of other places we need to... Um, you know, archive through illustration and through digital archiving. So I think that'll be a lot of fun. Um, you know, and, and the idea is that you and I will continue to grow this project, right? Like right now it's very downtown focused, but we hope to expand to Santa Ana. And then if we have the time and privilege to be able to expand to Orange County, that would be amazing. Oh man, that would be a dream. Totally. I mean, I have so, the map story. I mean, I've, 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 we've talked about it. I don't know that I've really uh, put it out there like that, but this was a real big, a labor of love. I just love my hometown. I love Orange County. I mean, I'm old enough to remember when there was a bunch of orange trees, strawberry fields, you know, and all that stuff is gone and downtown is changing so much. But not only Santa Ana, I mean, Orange County all around is changing a lot, you know, that I mean, maybe just nostalgic for it, but there's just a lot of love for it there. And, you know, I think, um, when it comes to just his Orange County history, I'm, I'm all for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I love learning about it. 
you know, do you not want to learn from the place where you are, you know, where you live, where, where you live, or where it's you just love. Yeah. And also so, right in the history, because I think what, what people forget is that every place that has changed, whether it's a name or style, like there's history behind it. And the reason that people want it as a space now is because of the history and the, and the place it was before. And then I think a lot of folks that, that talk about placemaking don't realize what they're doing um, when it's, when they don't acknowledge the history first. Right. Yeah. I mean, you gotta, um, you have to acknowledge history, man. You just have to, you can't overlook it. It's what was there before. And it also doesn't have to be a textbook that's context heavy. It could be art, right? Like you and I do a lot of references to historical things in Santa Ana and we don't do it in the traditional, like, you know, academic book. We do it in, you do it in visual art. I do it with writing and digital storytelling. So it doesn't necessarily mean it's not true. It just means this is a different way to present the information. Yeah, I mean, and artists are gonna, our studies are going to come up with all kinds of ways to, to uh, put out our ideas and, and... Or the better term is to capitalize on our ideas, right? Like, Thank and you. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, you're right. You're right about it. You know, I, I don't like to be uh, uh, let you know by, by, by making money, but the making money allows you to keep on doing the work. So, you know, it kind of goes hand in hand. I don't like to i don't take on projects for the money necessarily because i mean then you're just chasing money around i take projects it's stuff that i want to do but then you know i want to if, if you can get some money for it it will allow you to continue doing the work or expand on it or just do something else you know and, and that's where it's at for me yeah and i think that's what's important right we're not saying anybody should do anything for free because god knows you and i probably have done more than our fair share for free oh yeah um but I also think that there's a nice balance, right? Like there's like, you definitely need to be paid for the skills and the labor that you put into it and the creativity because that's an expertise in itself. But mm -hmm. at the same time, I don't think you and I do art projects for the sake of the money. We do art projects for the sake of, of the story that it, that it holds, right? And then, yes. and we do advocate for ourselves to get funded. You have a family, right? And of course, yeah. I don't have a house <laughs> so yeah. it's always like uh in order for me to remain sustainable and do all the work i do for free in the community that i select to do for free yeah um there's other uh, and other parts of my life i need to get paid right yeah yeah i mean you always have to find ways to give back for sure you know what i mean where it's a pr to me i always said it's a privilege to be an artist to be able to to you know uh um go about life being an artist because i mean I don't, i'm sure your parents were too but my parents all they did was work you know and it was just like a regular job and so doing something that we love for a livelihood is is uh something special and a privilege you know so gotta can gotta keep it going i mean there's, there's no stopping us anyway so yeah we try it ain't gonna happen I always, know, I always tell people that my parents um you know, didn't cross the border or migrate um, so that I, I can do the same thing that they were doing before, right? Like, and th there's a privilege in that. And yes. it's also the privilege of saying they did so much with so little, and that's what I still do, right? Like, yes. I did so much with so little, um, and that's the lesson that I, I benefited and inherited from my parents. Thank you so much for that lesson. I'm going to take that with me too because I, I, I like that. I like how you put it. And, and yeah, it's very meaningful and you're absolutely right, you know, because yeah, I mean, it was a different world back then, you know, even decades back, but we're doing the same thing, you know, in, in that sense that we're doing so much with, with, uh, with the means that we have. And, you know, usually I also like to ask my guests something um, about the day that's challenging or about the week that's challenging. But we kind of went over a lot about that. <laughs> so, um, I think this this conversation could go on longer so we can get into it. I really want to get even more into it and ask you more questions, but I want to stay, uh, 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 I want to be nice to you and your time because I know we're busy people and stuff. So I want to thank you for sharing a little bit of your day with us, 
uh, our listeners got to know you a little bit better, and now hopefully they can come by. Well, no, you guys need to come down to Yuba Mobile. You guys need to come down to Fair Ave. You guys need to come down tomorrow to uh, downtown Art Walk, Santa Ana Art Walk. Are you popping that? Project? You're you're gonna have your stuff there for people, right? Uh, yeah, I'll be there tomorrow. No, but are you bringing stuff for folks to check out as well? Am I bringing? Oh, you cut up one more time. I said, are you bringing like zines and stickers? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, I always carry that stuff with me. Give you yourself guys, if you didn't out know, out. Yeah. I have t-shirts. I got stickers. I mean, again, it's. I don't know. I mean, I, I just want to see people. I want to say a lot of people. I want to connect with people through art, or just say whatever's on their mind. So you guys need to come over and see us. We've got stuff. You, uh, you've got a lot of other artists, uh, uh, merchandise that you're going to be selling there too. Yeah, right. You guys heard about uh, Jose Lozano that's going to be um, at Libro Mobile later in the month. He's got some some uh, prints, his prints or cards. I think I got some cards from him. You guys, if you don't know who Jose Lozano is, he's an amazing artist. You need to come by and check it out. I'm not going to tell you anything because you guys need to go to Libro Mobile to come check it out. Or can I just check out his work? And um, again, I want to say thank you for spending a little time with us. And for bearing with me because this was our first live episode. I think I learned a little bit in the process. So thank you again for your patience and to our listeners. You guys are awesome. Before we leave, though, um, I want to give out the addresses for, for the locations. But also, where can uh, people find you or reach you? Uh, social media. Yeah. Or whatever. The mobile is now located at 1150 South Bristol, Unit A as an Apple 3. We're literally right next to Boost Mobile. So that's always fun because we're like, leave a mobile, Boost Mobile. Um, in the same shopping um, center as Northgate Market and the Bristol Swap Mall, which we love. Um, and then Crear Studio is over off of 5th and Broadway at 222 West 5th Street between um, Broadway and Sycamore. There's uh, the parking garage on 5th and Main that's free till 5 and also first two hours free. Um, and we're by the Coalition's mural, the Madre Naturaleza. So swing by there tomorrow. Um, and then at the bookstore, we're open Tuesday through Sunday from 10 to 6 p.m. Yay. And on... Um on social media, did you give your handles? Oh yeah, we have so many. <laughs> we, yeah. have, we have Libro yeah. Mobile, so Libro Mobile on Instagram and, and Facebook, Crear Studio on Instagram and Facebook. Oh, and Libro Mobile is also on Twitter. Um, and then my personal one is Cuentos Mobile. It's less active, but it's there. Okay. If you Now you guys know if you need to reach Sarah, or wanna reach Sarah, have any questions about the projects that she's doing or is gonna do, you know where to find her. And you guys don't forget to follow the podcast at How Do You Do on podcast underscore Roger Izar. You can follow me on social media, Roger Izar across the board on all the different platforms. You guys, thank you so much for listening, for hanging out with us for a little bit. I'll see you guys next week. And thanks again, you guys. Have thanks. a great one. And there you have it, you guys. Another one for the books. Thank you for joining me once again. I appreciate your support. You can find me or the podcast at How Do You Do Podcast underscore Roger Izar on IG. And you can find me on all major platforms on Roger Izar as well. Don't forget to support Libros Movie because you know you need to read. Don't lie. I need to read more too. Also, support Kareya Studios. You guys stay busy, keep it real, and I'll see you next time.